Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Hiroja Shai. Hello, uh, this is Hiroja Shai, and this is F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. And this is, I'm finally doing it. I'm doing the Washington Township plan is the ultimate MacGuffin. Uh, this is an episode that I've been struggling to do for the past two years. I've tried different styles, I've tried different narrations, and what it com- finally comes down to is I'm not very good at putting together, a, you know, the traditional video essay that people s- see on YouTube where you intercut different scenes from whatever it is the subject you're talking about, and then you have a voice narrator. I tried doing that, and it's, it's just not me. I'm just gonna talk to this screen and um, maybe there might there's gonna be one cut scene about um, what a MacGuffin is and then um, maybe there'll be a couple pictures up in here just so to help people follow along when I'm, I'm talking about somebody but uh, I've talked about the Washington Township plan in the past about my theories about it about um, what I think it you know it that it is a MacGuffin that we're initially I, I thought we were never going to actually see the object um, but we did in season three uh, and then fundamentally what it boils down to in essence is it really doesn't matter what that machine is if it does what it says it does to the fundamental story of Mr. Robot it's it's irrelevant really and I think what Sam Ismail has done um, you know as a primary creator of this show is that he has taken the trope of the MacGuffin and, and twisted it and done it in such a beautiful way that for the most part I look people realize that they're <laughs> that our obsession with the plant is a MacGuffin but um, how it has been like this hidden propel propelment almost like gravity if you will or um, yeah gravity that is whether we realize it or not is pushing and propelling these characters forward in the storyline and if affecting and affecting um, the decisions and not decisions that they make uh, throughout the course of the series and I think it's very beautiful I think it's well done and um, I think fundamentally uh, many aspects like certain specific episodes of Mr. Robot are going to be studied I uh, like for those that are into television and movies or stuff like that but I think fundamentally this series is going to be one of those series that people put up like with The Wire, Breaking Bad, uh, Deep Space Nine, um, you know X-Files, even Lost, even the Lost kind of crash and poopooed and stuff like that. Game of Thrones to some extent um, when it comes to like writing and great television as shows that you should be watching like Seinfeld, Bob Newhart, Rock, which is an old Fox television show about how to do comedy and things of that nature and uh, reality and stuff like that. There's going to be, people are going to be talking about Mr. Robot for, for a very long time. Um, so uh, let's kind of get into it. Um, here's the cut scene to anybody at this point who doesn't know what a MacGuffin is. Uh, in your films, and one of them is, uh, is a MacGuffin. Can you explain what a MacGuffin is? Yes, a MacGuffin you see in most films about spies. It is a thing that the spies are after. In the days of Rudyard Kipling, it would be the plans of the fort on the Khyber Pass. Mm -hmm. It would be the plans of an airplane engine and the plans uh, of an atom bomb, anything you like. It's always called the thing that the characters on the screen worry about, but the audience don't care. Mm-hmm. And someone asks, what is a MacGuffin? And there's a, the, it's described in a scene in an English train going to Scotland, and one man says to the other opposite him, he said, what's that package above your head there? And the other man said, oh, that, that's a MacGuffin. He said, well, what is a MacGuffin? He said, well, it's an apparatus for trapping lions in the Scottish Highlands. The man said, but there are no lions in the Scottish Highlands. He said, then that's no MacGuffin. 
Uh, thank you for clearing that up for us. Oh. So there you have it. You have Alfred Hitchcock, um, pretty much the, the gentleman that, the creator, if you will, that popularized this in design, what we know to be the psychological thriller. Um, great influence on horror and just film in general, like from the techniques and styles and how to use actors, um, particularly actors, whether they were popular at the time or waning, if you will, and, and putting them in your film and using the, you know, playing against type or stuff like that and expectations, you know, he really developed that. And he really popularized the trope of the MacGuffin. And it has been utilized through film and television for years now. Um, in universe, there was the Pulp Fiction movie, and you saw Pulp Fiction. Uh, with that film, there was an object, um, Marcellus Wallace case. Uh, we never see what's inside the case, but we've held the characters like of Samuel Jackson and John Travolta to one acquire the case back from the thieves that's, that had stolen it and not given it to Marcellus Wallace. The shenanigans that happen after they acquire the case, giving the case, and just the things in general and the loss of the case and stuff like that, um, propelling the different storylines um, of that particular movie. And what's another one? Um, the Maltese Falcon, um, where you actually see the MacGuffin. Um, sometimes you see the MacGuffin, like the Maltese Falcon, or even here in, in the show Mr. Robot, where we see uh, the hydrogen collider, I think it was what people were calling it, the, ob the object, the machine, if you will. Um, and in some cases, you don't, like in Pulp Fiction, you don't ever really fundamentally see the MacGuffin. It's just the thing that propels the characters forward in the storyline. Um, well, Huntie's Falcon, you, you actually see it, you touch it, and it turns out to be a fake. All these people who were greedy and did all these things were motivated to acquire it. It turns out to be a, a false statue, but... Um, <laughs> Again, it the the object itself is not very important. It's it's a thing that propels and motivates the characters forward in the storyline. And, and in this case, that's what's happened with the Washington Township plant, um, the uh, the machine, if you will, with these various characters. So I'm going to boil down to pretty much the primary characters since the very beginning of the show, um, which is you know Elliot, Darlene, Angela. Um, White Rose and Price. Um, to some extent, Tyra Wallach a little bit, but I'm just going to focus on these five characters and how the acquisition or the building, the creation, or the destruction of this particular object um, has propelled these characters forward in the storyline and gotten to, to them to the positions that they are. Um, let's begin with our architect, White Rose. Um, you know, she wants to control time. She wants to hack time. She is, time has been such an emphasis for her as a character. Uh, we find one of the primary reasons she's motivi motivated by um, hacking time and creating this machine, this machine that she believes will take people from this world that we currently exist into a parallel world. Um, as she stated in um, episode Exit, is because she lost a lover and because fundamentally in this world she cannot, as she stated in, in her villain monologue, that she was born not the correct way, the correct sex, and she could not live the life that she has wanted to live. She's had to put on the persona of minister, the Minister Zhang character to order, interact, and engage in the world when she really was White Rose the entire time. She's a woman, but she couldn't be that way um, in this world, and she couldn't be with her lover in this world because the cru cruelty of humanity, if you will. And so she put all her energy, all her resources, all her might, if you will, um, both brain power and actual army, the Dark Army, um, the creation of the Dark Army, the creation of many different things. Um, as she stated, she's killed. She's, you know, in order to, in her essence, you know, not only save herself, but save humanity from this very cruel world. And the things that she's done, like she created the Dark Army, um, she created this persona, or she, 
She was always White Rose, but she named herself that. She became a head of this very um, malicious and vicious um, hacking group, terrorist group, in order to acquire the things that she needed. Um, everything she's done to get here, she's uh, had the killed a CEO of E Corp, the company that would head the pro her project. She created a ultimate who's who one percent club of um, called the Dexis Group that was going to orchestrate and control the wealth and power of the world. Um, as soon as the collapse of the uh, Soviet Union, if you will, and the propelling of the internet. She saw an opportunity to profit from that and, co and convince many powerful people to join in this cause and form this group to acquire and control ultimate wealth, if you will. And that wealth then of these individuals was going to be used to basically, as Price did, said, the whole purpose and function of the Texas group was to create the object within the Washington Township plant the entire time. It wasn't about acquisition of power and just power and money. It was solely to create this object. Um, she killed, like I said, she killed the, the first CEO of the E Corp who tried to um, kill her project because it was poisoning people. Um, and he, he fundamentally didn't believe it. Price also didn't believe in, in the object in itself and always thought it was crazy. But he was getting paid very well and he, was, he, he became the new CEO of E Corp and his function was to not only run E Corp but also protect that project. Um, so he really, funnily up to a point, didn't care until he had to care. Um, you know, she created the Dark Army. She aligned herself with um, Elliot and the tanking of the economy because it fundamentally helped her obtain her goal, which was to take her object, which in order to f fully function had to be in a different location. In this case, that location which, which was picked was the Congo. Um, but to get it there, um, she had to do s certain things. And one of those things was by taking the economy, it allowed for Price's project of the e-coin, if you will, um, basically being the sole provider corporately of the world economy by having uh, a digital asset that's um, equivalent to to the U.S. dollar, but not tied to it, and um, basically just basically controlling the world economy through his one corporation. Um, that kind of concession to, for the Dexis Group to order to acquire the UN vote and to be able to get her object into the Congo, basically allowing for China to annex Congo, you know, colonize Congo and being, being stamped and approved by the world powers as, as that that was an okay thing and getting her a project there to the Congo. Um, these are the things that she's done. Um, as part of the DEXIS group, she's fundamentally fund various terrorist organizations, uh, oil movements, things of that nature to cause a domino effect to, to where her partners will acquire greater wealth, greater power and allowing her to have the resources necessary to, which was probably a very expensive project, to create the science and acquire the people to create the Washington Township plant object, the machine. Um, she did the phase two, she agreed to the phase two thing um, as payback to price for not protecting her baby, her, her, her project, if you will. Um, even if it was a bit of a detriment to where her, uh, her machine would not been able to get out of the country as quickly as she would like it, but she was being, being a bit petty, um, but she wanted to emphasize <laughs> to price how important her, her project was and, um, a dig, if you will. Uh, so she committed another huge terrorist, ac terrorist acquisition for that, which was the destruction of the 77 buildings, um, hobbling and crippling, in essence, E-Corp, if you will. But still, you know, really it was about the man destroying Price, but still having, you know, because of much empathy and sympathy is going to go towards E-Corp, it will allow E-Corp to propel forward. 
Um, she allows in her alliance with Elliot for, you know, going after E Corp and basically um, freezing those drives and crashing the economy, which would benefit her, her, her group, the Nexus group, greatly. Um, and allowing Elliot to live even longer after he proved no more use after phase one and phase two. When he, Elliot stated, you know, the one thing that he knew White Rose cared so much about was that he knew a way to get her, her, her project, that machine, if you will, to the Congo. And the hack was basically uh, a shipping hack that would allow for her machine to be considered humanitarian parts and not be inspected and be able to ship out of the United States and to the Congo without any hindrance. Um, and as thus, Elliot and Darlene were allowed to continue to live. Um, eventually, Elliot, you know, in and of himself, decides to continue to go after the Dexus group, even after he um, undid his hack and basically restored the economic power of not only the, the country and the world with um, all of E Corp's data restored, uh, which again propelled E, e Corp even further into the stratosphere. Um, but he was going to go specifically at the Dexus group because now he knew who all the players were and take all their money, which he did. Which hurt White Rose. It hurt White Rose. She got doxxed. She got exposed. The FBI came after her. Her dark army people kill, killed the FBI agents and then she goes directly to the one thing she's always cared about, which was her project, and turned on the machine. The machine that she knew by turning on there would cause a meltdown and possibly kill a bunch of people, but at this point, she no longer cared because she wanted to leave this world and go to the next world. And all this destruction, all this death, all these things that have happened have been a result of this particular object of her creation, which fundamentally was also her demise. Um, you know, the doxing, the, the loss of wealth of the Dexus group, um, and then eventually she having to kill herself, which I wonder if, personally, that is something you would have to do in order to go to the parallel existence, but maybe because she doesn't want to go come back here, that's why she killed herself. Um, because she says she showed Angela, which means maybe there's like a transfer of consciousness to the parallel existence if we are to believe that the object actually works but I guess we're going to know that when we watch the TV movie um, on Sunday so here we have like I said White Rose this, this, this Washington Township plant this machine, this object if you will uh, motivating her to create the Dark Army um, creating a Dexus group, the evil, like, Bond super villain, you know, all the paranoid things that people have about the wealthy, and creating a group to, that acquired wealth and power and manipulated all the world events since probably like 91 um, till now uh, in universe to 2015. Uh, like, the various terrorist acts that she's done. You know, uh, from phase one to phase two, destroying those buildings. Um, the various killings that she's done to kill people and to protect her project, particularly killing of Angela, because Angela wanted to go after the one thing that she knew that White Rose had um, cared about, uh, destroying Price, and then eventually killing herself in order to go to this next world, this next parallel existence. And while to some extent you can sympathize with White Rose about her um, not being herself, losing her lover, um, this cruel world, if you will, being what it is, um, <laughs> she's still pure evil. Like all the things she's done um, are evil. It makes you wonder if there was another way to get this done. If this was truly a machine that worked. If there was another way for it to be done without all the death and destruction. 
but um, I don't think that would, would be the case. But yeah, so again, this, this creation is this um, purpose that she's had for her entire existence since 1984 um, when she lost her lover, or maybe 85 when she lost her lover to 2015, this 30 year odyssey. It was to create this machine, to create this, this object for the sole purpose of no longer existing in this world has propelled her, her character throughout and motivated her series to such fierceness that she ultimately, you know, lost, I think, almost everything. And whether or not the object works or not, I, I still think she, she, she ended up losing to me personally. Um, because I don't think the object works. I don't, I don't think, that, I think Price was right. I don't think the machine works. But again, we'll see when we, we watch the TV show. And again, it, it really wouldn't matter if the machine worked or not because the purpose of the MacGuffin, if you will, is to propel the characters forward. And it's really not really about the MacGuffin. And the story of White Rose, what it's really about is the, the pain and the trauma of not being yourself, of not living in a world where you're allowed to be, you know, transitioning from um, physically a man in, into the woman that she's supposed to be, and not being able to exist as you are, and the and the trauma that it has caused her, um, and the way she lashed out in the world because she couldn't be uh, who she wanted to be, and what that has done. And what that fundamentally says about society and, and people and how they react to the to the world um, that they're living in. Um, oh, there it is. How they can't um, exist. And what we, I guess, can learn from White Rose's story is that we should let people be. We should let people exist and stop putting these shackles and and, and arbitrary, fundamentally fictional things upon them and allow them to be. We, we should allow people to be who they want to be as long as it's, you know, not destructive to others. You know, in the case of White Rose, because she couldn't be who she wanted to be, she became destructive to others um, in her acquisition to, to get there. Instead of if she had finally been allowed to transition and be with her lover and live her full existence, then we would have a completely different story. We wouldn't have the story of White Rose. Um, maybe she would be, as we see in the parallel existence, she would have been this great philanthrop um, um, philanthropist and humanitarian that did all these great things in the world. But ultimately, that's not what has occurred. And I think it really, um, you know, Really what we're getting at here is that the, the story of Mr. Robot is a story about trauma, how we deal with trauma, um, what type of people we become because of the trauma that's been inflicted upon us and how we act and react to the world around us, what we do to ourselves, what we do to others, and how you can try, as Elliot says um, in his response to uh, White Rose says, you don't make me laugh about society and about saving the world that Elliot wants to be in, currently lives in, even the world that has um, really shat upon him, that there are people that even though they're shat upon, still love, still try, still have hope, see people with other pain, and try to heal them of their pain, try to get them to be better, to propel them to heal themselves and um, deal with their trauma to address, you know, to f not maybe say fix themselves, but to to exist and try to be better and try to live and to love and have happiness and, and exist in this world and not allow the trauma to swallow them whole and become dark and evil like White Rose. And I think you know, as we we go on and talk about the different characters, I think we. We see the way um, these characters um, react and change because of the trauma they experience. Um, for example, Angela. You know, Angela's mother um, died because of her work on the Washington Township plant. She 
acquired cancer and died at a very young age when Angela was a child. Um, you know, she was a childhood friend of Elliot and Darlene's, both uh, Elliot's and Darlene's, you know, father Edward Olishan and Angela's mother worked at the Washington Township plant. This is how they knew one another. They they grew up together. They they kind of, they were best of friends, if you will. They still they still stayed friends um, or reacquainted with them with themselves um, over the years, even after, for um, some reasons, Angela and Elliot left the Washington Township plant area and lived somewhere else because after the death of their own father because, and we'll talk about it, about um, the cancer. And so this had a deep effect on Angela. Um, you know, and her motivations from the beginning of the series where she was just attempting and trying to be, you know, the best manager, if you will, um, at Allsafe in acquiring clients, particularly for um, the E Corp client, um, and she ended up getting kicked out of that when it, because of that, the F Society hacked that happened. Um, you know, she has bills, she has debt, she wants to be able to live a good life. Um, and some of those things, you know, are not possible because, you know, her family tried to sue the Washington Township plan. They didn't really get money. You know, her father doesn't really have a job. He's in tremendous amount of debt. She's in tremendous amount of debt. You know, um, society as a whole is just very taxing. And she's trying to be a good person in this very awful world, if you will. And what she ends up fundamentally doing is because of F Society, because the actions of really Elliot and Darlene, the revelation that Colby, um, the head of the E Corp CTO, if you will, um, was responsible for covering up the fact that the Washington Township leak was responsible for cancer. That revelation came out that she blackmails him by stating that you know he wasn't responsible for the hack. She's going to taint the evidence in exchange for his testimony, saying that yes, I did cover up what happened at the Washington Township plant and this gets him out of jail um, and this will help Angela being able to you know address the wrong that happened to her mother you know her mother died because of of her work her mother died of cancer and there was no retribution there's nobody held responsible and Angela feels that someone should be held responsible because she's a good person we see this uh, when she tries to give somebody back their wallet that they drop, and it turns out that they were the actual thief, <laughs> you know. Um, she tries to do the right thing all the time, and she, she sees taking over and restarting the Washington Township plant lawsuit and going after the people responsible for poisoning her mother, poisoning Darlene and Elliot's father and other people, as the right thing to do because when you're a good person you're supposed to do the right thing and then she gets head on and hits onto a wall if you will um she realizes that the right thing doesn't really get you anywhere um she ends up getting hired by e -Corp, which is an odd and weird thing um and she sees it as an opportunity to get inside information and and, and acquire as much information as about the washington township plan as she can in order to kind of take people down from the inside. But she fundamentally realizes when she sees her boss commit suicide right in front of her, and then the really disaffective attitude of Philip Price about the whole matter, saying, you know, why don't you go get some new shoes, do this, do that. And she doesn't realize he's really her father until later on. But um, she realizes by working and slowly being part of this culture and having that, finally having that money and a place and um, power, if you will, it slowly kind of corrupts her. But she still, she still wants to do the right thing. She still wants to be good, but her motivations have changed in how she acquires that victory. Um, she gets sucked in by Darlene and Elliot's cause of F Society. Um, by um, planting that infimta, the femtum cell for the FBI, kind of join the group as a way to kind of take down, you know, E Corp, if you will. 
um, to get payback for what happened to her mother and for the lawsuit. And then she finally realizes the way to do it, not only to be the inside player, but to acquire as much power of her, of her own herself and wealth. And maybe that might be a way to change things. And she does that. I mean, she goes and she goes to that. She acquires the information from within um, E Corp. She goes to the Washington Township. No, she goes to the, the nuclear energy. She tries one more time to be a good person. And she goes and talks to them about, you know, the radiation levels and how it's still extremely high and why nobody's done anything about it. And then she realizes that maybe someone's going to try to pick her up and take her as she's trying to leave and trying to do the right thing. Things are a little fishy. She's very hesitant. Um... And she leaves from there a little scared. And then she eventually gets picked up by White Rose because she she has a fundamental understanding that maybe she's a little bit over her head with the FBI, being part of society, of trying to manipulate and trying to get this lawsuit going. And um, she gets picked up by White Rose. In a way, she, I think she did get manipulated by White Rose. Um, White Rose gives her a promise that she's always wanted and that promise is that her mother will can come back to her that she can have that good life she can have no worries she doesn't have to worry about debt and um, basically the debt of her father her, her own debt um, she can live a good existence she can be a good person she can do the right things and the right things happen um, fundamentally all that she has to do is accuse us to White Rose and in the Washington Township plant lawsuit which would derail White Rose's project and Angela agrees I, I don't know again if by showing the object that's what fundamentally changed I, maybe it did um, for White Rose or maybe just by White Rose or but maybe just telling the story to Angela was enough for her to change but she stops what she's doing she stops doing the right thing she convinces the lawyers and the rest of the group to settle and they get a settlement from it's a substantial settlement I imagine and a, a little bit acknowledgement not fully acknowledgement that's how these lawsuits go about what happened and and moves on and, and, and moves up in the world if you will and ends up joining the dark army <laughs> goes from doing the right thing kind of working with F society and then joins with the dark army for the purpose of that one day she would have the promise of having her mother back of being that right person of being that good person of doing that right thing and, and living a good existence the myth if you will and this all is propelled from the trauma of losing her mother of living in a world economically where it's just soul crushing, if you will, she ordered to get by and caving to the, those pressures, if you will, and just doing fundamentally whatever it takes to get what you want. And it, it changes Angela. It, it almost, fundamentally almost breaks her because she participates in the phase two project, not realizing that she was part of a manipulation and part of White Rose to get back at Philip Price for not stopping Angela sooner um, to fundamentally kill all these people. She thought, you know, they're just building, blowing up buildings and, and the paper records. And this would somehow, you know, destroy E-Corp. E she naively believed that no people were going to die and people did die. And it, and it broke her. Um, when Price, you know, she's disheveled, she's a after the the buildings break up and she she she's thinking she's doing you know kind of the right thing if you will you know working with F Society and Dark Army to take down you know E Corp if you will and eventually the promise by White Rose of being able to get get her mother back that she was tricked by White Rose she was manipulated as Phil Price says that you know the machine doesn't work it it never did. It's just a lie. It's a con job. And she's been manipulated to 
participate in this evil act or she has to live with the fact that she committed this evil act and to some extent Angela can't and she thinks well fuck she, she white rose needs to go she's an evil person look at the evil things she made me do we can she tries to convince Philip Price to you know we can take her we can destroy her plant that plant we can take her out and Philip Price tries to convince her no that's that's not how it's done. You, you just have to accept what you did and, and move on. You, you can't do this. But she keeps insisting that she wants to take the machine from White Rose. And because of this stance and because Philip Price fundamentally doesn't have any power really, she ends up getting killed by dark, the Dark Army, which is something White Rose really wanted to do in the beginning. But I guess you could say she saw an opportunity to take down Philip Price a notch, if you will. Um, because of her obsession again to do to be good to do the right thing the good thing would be to take white rose out because she committed this, these heinous acts and to take the machine out as well because the machine is all that she cares about white rose cares about angela still tries to do the right thing but the right thing got her killed and i don't know what the really the, the, what's going to be said about that for, for her story really about the right thing gets you killed um, again we'll see for the TV movie but that's that's what the plant did to Angela the moving of the objects of her you know trying to do the right thing doing the right thing this way doing the right thing that way ends up being the wrong thing again lots of people killed for the promise of maybe seeing her mother again being her mother being brought back and yeah, you see the, the the changing of Angela from this really good person to this like shallow corporate entity person to this almost person with malice and anger in order to get um, and, and being so manipulated on Elliot to get him to do what is necessary to make the phase two project work. Um, a viciousness, a, a, a hardness that had not been there before. All in her obsession to do the right thing so that she could fundamentally be rewarded for doing the right thing and getting her mother back. And I guess that's just not how the world works. And unfortunately, Angela learned the hard way with death. Uh, I'm going to save Elliot for last. So <clears throat> let's go with Price. So. <clears throat> Price, who is the secret father of, of Angela, he met Angela's mother at the Washington Township plant. He was, I guess, you know, an up-and-coming executive. She was just a brilliant person. It didn't work out. He didn't want kids. Um, I guess he tried, in a way, um, as Angela's mother got sick, to give some money or something like that. But fundamentally, he was never part of her life. Um, as I guess you could say he got older and Angela got sucked into um, his world when he he went with Allsafe because Angela worked there as a way of maybe, I don't know, helping her out, um, even bringing her into E-Corp and kind of guiding her and mentoring her, uh, bringing her along, um, helping her in a way... Uh, <laughs> take out those two guys that were doing horrible things with the company and reassuring her that, you know, yeah, you, you did a, the right thing for the wrong reasons, but good on you, like encouraging her to some extent and then eventually revealing himself to her um, because, you know, White Rose was basically manipulating and trying to destroy her in order to destroy him and he felt guilty about it. Um, and fundamentally, he couldn't save her because he he really didn't have any power in the situation to to stop the Dark Army from killing Angela. He tried emotionally to connect with her and prevent her from saying the words about going after White White Rose. But she was fixated. She she wanted to do the right thing. She wanted to correct her mistakes instead of just living with them and suffering by them and fixing things. Um, as a result, he had to watch his daughter die. And so his connection, his 
storyline. Basically, he became the CEO because the previous CEO wouldn't, um, wanted to, do, to stop the White Rose Project. But he, he, as he said, he's a mercenary. A mercenary. He goes to wherever the fight is and whoever pays him. And he is ruthless and, and, and vengeful and, and very good at his job. And so he took over the job of uh, E Corp and made sure things went like clockwork. Um, he got people like Colby to cover up the Washington Township plant. Um, he eventually helped, you know, to some extent try to steer Angela away from the Washington Township plant, but when she kept pursuing, he protected her and allowing the lawsuit to pursue to pursue instead of quashing it like he was supposed to. Um, because she was his daughter. And because of that he the consequences were very severe for him. Um he allowed the hack. I mean, he knew the hack the F Society was doing because he knew what Dark Army was doing, uh, what White Rose was doing, uh, because it benefited his eCoin project, which allowed for eCorp to be basically the corporization of the monetary system, like complete control of the global monetary system would go through eCorp and acquire great wealth and power for himself and the Dexis group. Um, he was not part of phase two. He was a subject of phase two because he didn't stop the Angela lawsuit because of his relationship with her as his daughter. Um, he did manipulate the UN vote because of his political connections to make sure that the Congo can be colonized by China and allow for White Rose's project to move there. Um, and, but because this is protection of Angela and even fundamentally losing Angela, because he didn't protect 100%, because that's what Dark Army wants, 100% the Washington Township plan. He chose family over this object. Um, you know, 77 buildings blew up. Uh, he would eventually have to step down as CEO, and get replaced by that little shit, as he puts it, Tyrell Wellick. And um, the loss of Angela um, helps him want to basically side with Elliot because he feels that Elliot, as he said to White Rose, that little piss squeak in the hood hoodie is going to take White Rose down and she knows it and um, he's here for it. He wants to see, you know, even if he goes out, he wants to see White Rose pay for what she did, which was kill his daughter. And um, he gives the information necessary to Elliot. He's like, the, for the last meeting, because Elliot and Darlene are going to do that final hack and take, and they did take all the Dexas group's money. Um, he, you know, the one he knows he's going to die. He knows you need because this is what Angela wanted. Angela wanted the Washington Township plant exposed, the machine to be exposed, the machine to be taken from White Rose for what she did with the the terror, manipulating her with the terrorist terrace building, you know, blowing up those buildings and fundamentally lying about the fact that she, she couldn't bring her mother back. Why Rose couldn't bring Angela's mother back. Um, and giving that information to Elliot because he knew Elliot would do the right thing and take the take that machine down. Even though the machine doesn't work, is is not relevant. Um, and Price doesn't believe the machine works. What is relevant is that White Rose believes the machine works. That White Rose will do anything to protect that machine. And by taking that object away from White Rose is fundamentally destroying White Rose. And so he gives that information to Elliot as one of his last acts, besides being super petty <laughs> towards the end there and just rub it in in White Rose that she's lost her wealth. And Pipsqueak in the hoodie is going to take her out. <laughs> and he ends up dying. You know, White Rose kills uh, Price right there on the steps. Um, <laughs> Wow, uh, it was a great scene. It's a great scene, but again, this this object of price doesn't freaking believe in. He's just a mercenary hired to protect it, make sure it goes, and then fails in that when his daughter comes along. Um, you know, I guess his emotional journey for him really. I don't know if he has a really emotional one or what his his story is. Because it's so difficult. Because he's still an evil bastard. He's still evil. I mean, he helped along participating with the Dexas group. If he quashed Angela's lawsuit early on, even though she was his daughter, uh, phase two wouldn't have happened. And 
E Corp would have still chugged along in the creation of eCoin. Um, so, I guess really his story comes down to of all the actions and the things that he's done, which have been bad motivations, finally piled up on him and he had to face the consequences of it. And and there are consequences in this world. You you do have to pay for your actions, whether it's emotionally, physically, spiritually, or you know get thrown in the clink or something like that um, for your actions when they're motivated by evil, I guess, or pure greed. Um, so there's there's that for him, his story. So we have Darlene, the sister of Valiant, and just masterful G, if you will, you know. Her story is very tied to Elliot, even though she has her own separate story going on there. Cue the saxophone um, with Darlene. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, Edward Alderson, you know, was her father. Um, she was fairly young. She was four years old, I believe, when she, he died. So she has, even I, even though I think she does know what he has done, what Edward Ellison has done, she, I guess she still cares about her father, or at least what his death has done to her family. Um, he died of cancer. Uh, <laughs> Because of working at the Washington Township plant, her family tried to sue. They lost the lawsuit. Um, this, because of the loss of Edward Alderson, she was left with her mother, Magda, who was terrible to both her and Elliot. They lost, you know, the primary breadwinner, so I'm assuming Magda had to go get a job and didn't have the same economic pool. They probably lost their home their status, if you will, of being middle class, um, living somewhere completely different. And the trauma of all that, you know, living with an abusive parent in a different abusive manner um, propelled her to have the type of personality that she she does. Um, she joined Elliot because she worships the hell out of her brother. Uh, and help create the F Society hacking group for the sole purpose of taking down that corporation responsible for poisoning her father and destroying her family's life. She killed Susan Jacobs because Susan Jacobs is one of the lawyers that helped uh, squash the initial Washington Township plant lawsuit that could have economically helped benefit her family. Um, she has... Um, you know, she manipulated Angela to hack the FBI, got recruited her to be part of F Society. Uh, she's a really great social engineer, so she's really skilled at manipulating people around them in an essence to be able to acquire and do things necessary for her end goals. Uh, she wasn't part of phase two. Um, and that was because phase two was a horrible terrorist act and Darlene was not going to be part of that. She she was not going to be down for killing a massive amount of people. Uh, she would always seek out or find a different way of doing things. Um, she's not down for the killing, if you will, even though she did kill Susan Jacobs. Um, because her and Cisco were in love. Cisco, you know, was helping her. The Dark Army went out to... Uh, take out Cisco and, and possibly Darlene um, and she ended up turning to the FBI and becoming an informant and basically try to um, inform on her group in the Dark Army on behalf of the FBI if you will. Um, she eventually helps Elliot get the Washington Township plant if you will out of the country of the Congo even though that's more of Elliot's hack if you will but because of that hack she gets to live Uh, she helps Elliot destroy the Texas group because fundamentally, ultimately, they're the ones behind 
the E Corp and they're behind um, the Washington Township plant. So taking them out, taking out the 1%, the garbage people, the people, as she said, that manipulated society and the laws to benefit them and suffer no consequences. That's what she's all about is the fact that people shouldn't walk in the world consequence free. They should pay for the things that they've done. Which is why she dispersed all that money to everyone's e-coin wallet and, um, you know, Robin Hood and distribute the wealth, if you will, um, make things equal. Um, but she she got off, she got off the ride when Elliot wanted to destroy the Washington Township plan. She was like she was done. Um, she wanted to escape. She wanted to get away with it, get away from it all, if you will. Uh, she really fundamentally set out to do the goals that she wanted to do, which was destroy the company that destroyed her family. That's it. And um, she achieved that, if you will. And so she has her resolution to some extent. And she ended up having a second resolution when she did try to escape um on that plane with Darlene, I mean, not Darlene, with um, Dom and go to Budapest, that she realizes that, she fundamentally realizes that she can be by herself because she has a very serious codependency issue. Um, many of her dreams have not been her own dreams, like <sighs> creating up society is really Elliot's dream. Um, she struggled to be the leader because it wasn't really her dream, her goal, even though she participated with Elliot. Um, to lead in that fashion, if you will. Um, going to Budapest, again, was Cisco's dream, um, not hers. Escaping, if you will, is not really her dream. Um, so being able to be by herself, even though she says she's not very good at it, is something that she learned she can do um, because of revelations with Dom and that journey, she will, as a character. And standing on her own, by herself. Not really going with Elliot one last adventure, was a very solid good decision and a step forward for her on that path realization that she can stand on her own and she doesn't have to be with other people she can do things for herself and do things on her own um and i think really that's really kind of her journey for darlene i mean yes she was kind of a the sidekick character to Elliot and propelled forward because of things that happened to her father but in the end uh, she, what she took from the trauma is that she is sucked it's still ongoing for her I mean she has panic attacks and um, other issues but she can build herself up again and even her, in the way she's helped to try to help her brother, like he can even build himself again. She's always been there to try to get him to kind of ground him in reality and be here. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, he hacked his brain and forgot that Darlene's his sister. He, he's done that before. I mean, she knows when he's Mr. Robot. She knows about his personality. She knows how to handle it, what medications he's supposed to take, how to address and deal with the issues that he's dealing with and, and helping him. And even to some extent, not actually saying, you know, what his trauma is to him because it will just traumatize him further, but waiting for him to acknowledge what has happened to him and then being there to listen or be there, being there for him and building him up. And she's just had, she's just taking that skill set and she's going to do it to herself and build herself up and, and be the person I'm sure is going to be a kick ass person that nobody can handle be. And that's really what her journey is thus far until the TV movie. But I think that's what what the object of the Washington Township plan has done with her storyline. You know, help, helping her be along with her brother and, and creation of society. Um, reconnecting with Angela, who's in essence, you know, her best friend, as she says. Um, and building that relationship. Um, having a relationship with Dom in many ways is much more compelling than that with Cisco. Um, being for herself, really, and standing for herself and creating things for herself and, and developing things for herself is really um, her journey and what the object of 
pursuing or the effect of what has happened with the, the Washington Township Plan project has done to her character. And we'll see what the end journey goal will be when uh, we watch the beauty movie. And Elliot, let's see. So, the reason that a society was created was because, you know, as Elliot said, the wrong society, um, because of the trauma he experienced, due to, the, to what his father, Edward Alderson, has done to him, he feels the great wrong of, in, of society um, because of the trauma he experienced as a child, even though he, he fought back and tried to expose that trauma. And often what happens to children that nobody believes him, which I think is the reason why he got probably got pretty abused by his mother. She didn't believe him, um, but he, you know, he fundamentally wants to go after you know horrible people uh, who manipulate society as a whole. He wants to, as a result of what happened to him, he wants to save people. He wants to save society and save society from themselves and one of the things he wants to do is take down like the one percent of the one percent the people manipulating everything take them out of the equation so the society can heal and be better for itself um and a lot of that is motivated by what his father's done to him and his father's death and i'm going to say this right now i think elliot killed his father i think he killed his father at the movie theater i don't think um edward alderson died of cancer i think elliot poisoned him that's why he was so disconnected um, at that death scene at that movie theater um, because his, he knew his, even after jump, throwing himself out the window to escape his father, um, that his father was not going to stop, that his father was sick, he even told people, people didn't believe Elliot, and I think he, he poisoned his father to protect himself and his sister. And that is the thing that the council of Elliot's um, have not... Um, re revealed to Elliot because he's unaware of what he's done. Um, that's something that maybe he buried out of his brain. And I think that also because Elliot poisoned his father and his father's death is not directly related to his cancer, it might have caused the hindrance of the uh, Washington Township plant lawsuit that his family was doing because his father didn't exactly die from cancer and um, that might have been used to say that, oh, well, we're not responsible for this. Look how Edward Alderson died. He didn't die from the cancer, blah, blah, blah. So that might end up, you know, harming his family and maybe possibly the other, if there was a class action lawsuit, possibly the other families as well. Um, because that's just how those legal battles go sometimes. But it's still a motivation, if you will, because of the trauma that Elliot has experienced. He, it necessi necessitates him wanting to save the world. I mean, the first thing, the first type of hack that we see Elliot do was he took down Ron's coffee guy um, because he was a purveyor of child pornography. And he did it in the real world because he wanted to look at Ron, Ron in, the, in the eye and let him know why he, what he has done and he knew about it. And he, he wanted to let him know the FBI is already on the way. And he wanted, I guess you could say, to see this guy's face in person, this evil person, and, and let him know that I, Elliot, am <laughs> responsible for your demise. Um, and he does this all the time. He tries to save the world. It doesn't quite work out that way or as easy as around Ron's coffee, but that's his motivation. And, um, you know, he created different personalities because of his journey to take out E Corp, the, the great 1%, the great purveyors that we now to be known the Dexas group um, of evil you know E Corp is the ultimate villain eventually the Dexas group that comes to the revelation of the name of that group that he finds out from Price the ultimate villain that he can take down and help society as a whole and uh, you know he created a society to, to, to do that he created I guess a different personality or a racist personality because of his trauma and his sole purpose of being able to take out this ultimate evil um and you know he, he you know he crashed the economy he uh 
develop phase two, which was to destroy the E Corp infrastructures and destroy the 77 buildings. Uh, he eventually, you know, realized his mistake and how he wasn't bettering society by doing it the way he did and restored the hack drives that would help restore the economy. Um, and he, he knew in a way to keep himself and his sister alive, in a way to manipulate White Rose to that extent, that he could get the Washington Township plant machine device, whatever the device is, which he up to that point really didn't care about, um, out of the country into the Congo by doing the hack, which was um, making making the machine seem like a humanitarian um, effort. But now, now that he's achieved his ultimate goal of taking out the Dexas groups, stealing their money, distributing the funds, exposing White Rose because she killed Angela, um, who died as a result of her pursuit of doing the right thing and trying to take the Washington Township plant down. Um, getting that information from Price, who fundamentally died. Um, <coughs> um, you know, Price sacrificed his life to uh, destroy White Roads, to not redeem himself, but to maybe redeem Angela by taking out White Rose. And Elliot completing that journey and going to the Washington Township plant to, to destroy the object really wasn't fundamentally trying to either redeem Price or Angela um, or even really himself. It, it was really to, as he, he spoke in his speech about the, the fuck you to White Rose, was to acknowledge that this world is worth saving, is worth being in. It's really about Elliot healing himself, acknowledging the traumas that propelled him to want to save the world because the world did not save him when he needed the world to save him, uh, to be able to save others from destructive and evil forces beyond their control. And uh, You know, control is an illusion, but people need control. They need to be able to have ownership of their, their lives and not be, um, you know, destroyed or harmed in some fashion. And fundamentally Elliot acknowledgement, acknowledgement towards then even after White Rose uh, kills herself in uh, playing that text adventure game and trying to, to again save the world by stopping the supposed uh, machine being on and shutting it down is to acknowledge that he can accept his trauma he can heal from his trauma that the people in his life like Darlene like Angela, uh, even Shayla to some extent, um, there were people, in, and even Frederick and, not Frederick, <laughs> and Moby and Trenton, and trying to, you know, be better in this world, to, to exist in this world, to survive it, beyond just surviving it, but to, to try to flourish, that he can fundamentally acknowledge his, the harm that has happened to him, not move past it, but it, and accept that this happened to him and, and build to be a complete Elliot, if you will. Um, not a better Elliot, per se, like a completely whole, 100% happy-go-lucky person, but a person nonetheless. And I think fundamentally, and I'm not the only person who's thought this, there's there's this stuff going on on the boards for some time. And even, I would say by thir season three, people have been talking about how this show is about trauma and acknowledging trauma and dealing with trauma, especially after episode 407, how the whole purpose of the show is about the traumas that people experience, the trauma personally in their lives, things they've done to them, things they've done to society, and dealing with the trauma and the different ways people deal with it. White Rose and even Elliot to some extent went on this very destructive pathway that um, nearly destroyed the world for the sole purpose of, for White Rose to get um, to another existence. For Elliot, it was to try to save it, to save it from itself, you know, kind of like uh, cancer, killing cancer, you have to kill some healthy cells to get to the bad cells. And Elliot acknowledged that that was the wrong way to go about it. That was not how to save the world, or even if it was his job even to save the world. And um, 
for the most part, I think really what it is is that the, the whole chasing this object, this object is push compelled and push these characters forward like gravity to, to this end point. This MacGuffin, if you will, it's not about parallel existence or time travel or any of that. Or even the Dexter script to some extent is kind of a MacGuffin, if you will, or just stealing their funds and 1% and robbing, robbing them and giving back to society as, as Darmin has done. Um, because society has been um, subverted. As she said, the bug was they, that we believe in the system and they subverted the system against us. And it's, you know, it's time to change the system. Not take it down, but change the system. Change it to actually benefit the people. And the distribution of that wealth may be a pathway towards that. Uh, that was Doreen's answer to really her trauma and her existence in a sense. Um, having that wealth to be able to stand on your own legs for many people to be able to have that ease of burden financially to be able to exist and not worry about rent and food and things of that nature and maybe be able to think of other things um, to some extent is her way of trying to heal the world in a less destructive path than maybe perhaps her and Elliot together were doing with F Society. Um, so fundamentally it doesn't matter if that object, that machine, the Washington Township plant works, does anything creates this sci-fi sci -fi parallel existence. That's not the purpose of the story. If to get to this object, or even to take down the Dexis group, or the 1% and 1% of society, it's really about the fundamentally the journey of this unreliable narrator, narrator Elliot, and the traumas that he's experienced, and his, um, his ability to navigate this society and this world, um, living in it, um, challenging it, trying to destroy it, Sh trying to reshape it like he did um, when he was in prison to a different sort of reality that he can fit in. But to fit in the society, to kind of not overcome, but reconcile with, with all that's around, around you and try to not only better yourself, um, be yourself, but maybe better society in a much more positive fashion, um, a different type of fashion than what was occurring in the in the in universe that is Mr. Robot, and it'd be interesting to see how uh, what that happens in the TV movie. If the if the purpose of the machine is really like I said, is to be a MacGuffin and not really be anything of any importance to this overall arc of story. Like we're not really going to a parallel existence, but <clears throat> it's been you know a very amazing journey. It's been. A wild ride. Um, I am going to do a uh, rewatch eventually. I'm going to let this show settle however the TV movie ends, um, if it's, they stick a landing or not, and um, rewatch it with fresh eyes with a full knowledge of the, how the ending is going to go. And like I stated in my review of the exit, and, and see it like a good book. Maybe sit for it on a, like a year. Maybe do the what some people are talking about um, doing the 5 9 marathon and rewatching the entire series on that day. Um, bringing somebody new and, and having them watch it and see things in, in the binge format instead of the weekly format that I did my first experience. Um, but it's been an enjoyable experience, whatever, however may, it may end. But that's that. Um, like I said, I, the ultimate MacGuffin. It's, you know, it's this object that's been bouncing around. We've seen it kind of, sort of, maybe know what it does or doesn't do but it's it's not important to the overall arc is not the destination and is really like the journey if you will of the overall story so that's it that's my walk through i'll try to edit it the best i can and get it up i've been having a bit of issues but i will see you on the other side of this my friends um i have i'll be doing a live reaction i'm on the west coast i'll be doing a live reaction to to the show and then I'll do my final review and maybe bring myself to do that 407 review. And then I'll talk about my plans for the channel. Um, but for now, uh, this is Roja Scheib, the moderator of this channel. This is F Society RC Podcast. I'm logging off for now. And until next time, friends.